Earthquakes have rattled Alaska's Aleutian Island. We did have a major earthquake just south of Alaska right around 2 o'clock this afternoon. It was a 7.5. The 1585 Aleutian Islands earthquake likely caused a tsunami that hit Japan's Sanriku coast on June 11, 1585. Historical records and oral traditions are unclear about this event, and it was initially confused with earthquakes in Peru and Japan in 1586. Scientists believe a massive earthquake on the Aleutian subduction zone in the North Pacific Ocean was responsible. Could this ancient earthquake hold more than it shows? Join us as we expose the devastating entity causing such a massive natural disaster. The strange story of Japan's 1586 big wave. In 1586, there was talk in Japan about a large wave, up to six feet high, hitting near the village of Takura in the Motoyoshi district of Miyagi Prefecture. The records from that time are unclear or incomplete, which makes it hard to figure out exactly where this tsunami came from. People started calling it the Orphan Tsunami or Ghost Tsunami because there were so many unanswered questions about this event. Kenji Satake, a seismologist from Japan, has argued that the story of the 1586 tsunami should be ignored as it was likely not a real event. There is no solid evidence or historical records that show a tsunami hit the Sanriku coast that year. However, following the devastating 1960 earthquake in Valdivia, Chile, and the subsequent tsunami that reached Japan, Seishi Ninomiya, a researcher from Tohoku University, began to look into historical tsunami records along the Sanriku coast. He linked the legend of the 1586 tsunami with a real earthquake that occurred in Peru on July 9th of the same year. This earthquake in Peru, with a magnitude of 8.1, broke a 108-mile section of the Earth's crust along the Peru-Chile Trench. Reports from Calayo, Peru, described the tsunami there as reaching heights of 12.1 feet and, in some exaggerated accounts, up to 79 feet. Later analysis concluded that a more reasonable height estimate was 16.4 feet. In 2006, a team of researchers tried to model the 1586 Peru tsunami to see if they could replicate the reported wave heights in Peru and Japan, but were unable to find a match that fit all the historical descriptions. This is because large tsunamis from Chile are known to reach Japan due to how the tsunami waves travel, but tsunamis originating from Peru are generally weaker and not aligned in a way that would strongly affect Japan. This makes it unlikely that the Peru earthquake was the cause of the supposed 1586 event in Japan. After an earthquake hit the Sanriku region in 1933, researchers looked back at old records and found references to a tsunami on June 11, 1585. This date is also recorded in Japanese history as Tensho 13th year, 5th month, and 14th day. In addition, another record mentioned a tsunami on January 18, 1586, which may have been caused by an earthquake known as the Tensho earthquake. Initially, the Sanriku tsunami was incorrectly dated to 1586, which coincidentally was the same year as a significant earthquake in Peru. The Hawaiian Islands are particularly vulnerable to tsunamis, which have originated both locally and from distant sources. Some of the largest of these waves are known as mega tsunamis, and the last one occurred more than 10,000 years ago. Throughout the current geological era, known as the Holocene, the islands have experienced numerous tsunamis. These events have left geological evidence in the form of sediment layers that indicate past inundation. Additionally, native Hawaiian oral histories and legends frequently reference the destructive power of tsunamis, with stories of waves devastating the coastlines and impacting the local populations. One notable historical event occurred in Kaneohe Bay on the island of Oahu. Both archaeological and historical data suggest that this particular tsunami happened between 1040 and 1280 AD. There is also a traditional Hawaiian chant, composed between the years 1500 and 1600, that describes a tsunami striking the western coast of Molokai. 
This chant is considered the oldest recorded observation of a tsunami in Hawaii, reflecting the deep cultural memories of these natural disasters. Geological studies have shown that since the earthquake in 1585, there has been significant geological activity along fault lines, accumulating between 78 to 131 feet of displacement. This movement indicates the potential for another similar or even more powerful earthquake to occur in the future. If such an earthquake were to trigger a tsunami, it would take roughly 4.5 hours for the tsunami waves to travel across the ocean and reach the Hawaiian Islands. This short travel time emphasizes the need for efficient early warning systems and disaster preparedness plans to protect lives and property. Understanding the history of tsunamis and the geological activity that causes them is crucial for the safety and preparedness of island communities facing these periodic and powerful threats. The collective memory of tsunamis, supported by geological evidence and historical records, serves as a vital tool for future planning. By studying past events, scientists and planners can better predict and mitigate the impacts of future tsunamis. This ongoing research is essential not only for historical interest, but also for its practical applications in improving public safety and disaster response strategies. In 2002, a team of scientists examining the northwest coast of Kauai in Hawaii found signs of a very large tsunami in a hidden layer of sand. This layer resembled those left behind by the tsunami that followed the 1946 earthquake. Another significant tsunami event was identified at the Makawahi Cave, believed to have occurred around the 16th century. Additional research took place in 2001 at the Makawahi Sinkhole, located within the same cave system on the southern shore of Kauai. Here, researchers dug up a layer of deposits about 2.6 to 3.3 feet thick. This sinkhole is notably large, measuring 98 to 114 feet in width, with walls that are between 20 to 82 feet tall. The materials found in this deposit, including stones and pieces of broken Aeolianite, had been transported from distant locations, suggesting that they were carried there by a very powerful tsunami. The rough and angular shape of the stones, gravel, and sand indicated they had been violently broken in a single catastrophic event. Carbon dating of these materials suggested they were deposited between the years 1430 and 1665 AD. Just as scientists learn more about old tsunamis in Hawaii, new signs show even bigger natural forces at work. Hawaii's Hidden Giant Waves In a subsequent 2014 study, Rhett Butler and his team from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, National Tropical Botanical Garden, and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center further analyzed the site. They confirmed the thickness of the deposit at 2.62 feet and measured the bottom of the sinkhole to be 23.6 feet above sea level, located 328 feet from the coastline. They also estimated the total volume of the deposit to be around 1968 cubic feet. The characteristics and location of the deposit led researchers to conclude that the tsunami responsible for these deposits was much larger than any produced by the biggest earthquakes in the Pacific known to date. For context, the largest tsunami run-up height recorded in recent history was 10 feet during the 1960 Valdivia earthquake. Yet none of the more recent tsunamis have come close to reaching or flooding the Makawahi sinkhole which is positioned 23 feet above the ocean level and 328 feet away from the beach. These findings are significant because they provide concrete evidence of the extraordinary natural events that have occurred in Hawaii's past. Such historical tsunamis were much larger than those we have seen in recent centuries, highlighting the dramatic and powerful forces of nature that can affect coastal regions. Understanding these past events helps scientists predict and prepare for potential future tsunamis, ensuring better safety measures for coastal communities around the world. The historical and geological insights gained from studies like these are crucial for advancing our knowledge of natural disaster patterns and their impacts on human settlements over the centuries. Hawaii's history is marked by frequent earthquakes, primarily due to its volcanic origins and the composition of its underlying geological structures. 
Earthquakes in this region can be categorized into three distinct types, volcanic, tectonic, and mantle. Volcanic earthquakes in Hawaii are closely linked to the activities of its many volcanoes, such as Kilauea, Mauna Loa, Hualalai, Haleakala, and Kamaehuacanaloa. These quakes generally have magnitudes below 4.0, making them relatively small and mostly detectable only through sensitive seismic instruments. The nature of volcanic earthquakes can vary, including tremors which occur due to vibrations from fluid or gas movement underground, long period and very long period events that result from the movements of these substances in discrete bursts hybrid or composite events that typically originate from rock falls into lava lakes, and volcano tectonic earthquakes, which are triggered by the fracturing of rocks under the stress of moving magma. Tectonic earthquakes in Hawaii are attributed to the movement along faults within the Earth's crust. These earthquakes can range from minor to moderate in scale, generally not exceeding a magnitude of five, occurring predominantly on upper crustal faults beneath the island's volcanoes. However, larger flank earthquakes with magnitudes up to eight can happen along the decolement fault. This fault acts as a boundary, separating the older oceanic crust from the overlaying volcanic structures. Notable historical tectonic quakes include the 1868 Ka'u earthquake, which reached a magnitude of 7.9, and the 1975 Kalapana earthquake with a magnitude of 7.7. .7. These earthquakes often resulted in substantial damage, causing tsunamis and landslides, such as the 1868 event, which triggered a landslide burying 31 individuals and a tsunami that led to further casualties and destruction. Mantle earthquakes stem from the bending of the lithosphere, comprising the Earth's crust and upper mantle, due to the immense weight of the Hawaiian Islands. These earthquakes typically occur at depths exceeding 12.4 miles, Examples include the 2006 Kiholo Bay earthquake, with a magnitude of 6.7, and the 1973 Anamu earthquake, which had a magnitude of 6.2. These deeper seismic events often lead to pronounced ground shaking and extensive damage across affected areas. In 2017, scientists returned to the sinkhole site to analyze plant materials found in the deposits. Radiocarbon dating showed that the tsunami that deposited these materials likely occurred between 1425 and 1660 AD. Based on the height the tsunami would have needed to reach the sinkhole, researchers suggested it might be connected to the historically misdated Sanriku tsunami of 1586. The so-called Sanriku orphan tsunami is thought to have been responsible for material deposits near Sendai City, Miyagi, which could not be linked to any local earthquakes. Historical records from Tokura Village indicate that this tsunami hit the northeastern coast of Japan, reaching heights between 3 and 6.5 feet. This suggests that the impact of the tsunami was significant, but not sourced from any nearby seismic activity. Additionally, evidence of ancient tsunamis has been found at nine different locations along the coasts of Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. These findings indicate that a tsunami occurred in the vicinity of the Cascadia subduction zone before the well-known 1700 event. The event prior to 1700 in the Cascadia region, which was less intense, is estimated to have occurred between 1402 and 1502, with a possible error margin of about 20 years. This timing means that the Cascadia zone could not have been responsible for the 1585 tsunami. Instead, the dating aligns more closely with the Aleutian Islands as the probable origin of the tsunami. Looking at other historical earthquakes around the same period, the closest significant seismic events recorded were the 1604 Arica, 1587 Guaylabamba, and 1575 Valdivia earthquakes. These quakes all triggered tsunamis along the coast of South America. Despite the magnitude of these events, there were no records or evidence of their tsunamis reaching the shores of Japan. This absence of impact on the Japanese coasts from these South American tsunamis further supports the theory that the 1586 tsunami had a different origin, 
likely linked to the Aleutian Islands. While researchers dig deeper into the records of past tsunamis, surprising new finds link faraway earthquakes to local disasters. The huge waves of Sedanka Island. Studies on Sedanka Island, close to Amaknak Island, have uncovered evidence of five significant tsunami events before 1957. Notably, one of these events pushed tsunami deposits as far as 0.6 mile inland and reached elevations up to 59 feet above sea level. This particular tsunami has been dated to have occurred between 1530 and 1665 AD. The Aleutian Islands are positioned near a convergent plate boundary where the Pacific Plate collides with the North American Plate. At this juncture, the ocean floor features the Aleutian Trench, marking where these tectonic plates meet. Here, the Pacific Plate is subducted beneath the North American Plate along the Aleutian Subduction Zone, which stretches for about 2485 miles. This zone features a large thrust fault capable of producing significant megathrust earthquakes, which can generate tsunamis. For instance, the 1946 Aleutian Islands earthquake and the 1964 Alaska earthquake, which had magnitudes of 8.6 and 9.2 respectively, both triggered destructive tsunamis. Further exploration of this dynamic was seen in a 2014 study led by Rhett Butler, where researchers created a simulation of a tsunami resulting from a 9.25 magnitude earthquake in the eastern Aleutian Islands, west of the earthquake's epicenter. The simulated earthquake rupture covered an area of 62 miles by 372 miles with an average fault slip of 114 feet on the megathrust. This model showed that such an earthquake could produce a tsunami powerful enough to flood the sinkhole previously studied. Along the Pacific Northwest coast, this model tsunami reached heights up to 29.5 feet, with an average height of 11.5 feet. The orientation of the megathrust fault relative to the Hawaiian Islands allowed the tsunami energy to be directed more efficiently towards them. The findings from this simulation indicate that while this particular model accounted for the potential inundation of the sinkhole, other distant sources of tsunamis cannot be ruled out. Such distant events would need to involve fault slips significantly larger than those recorded in historical events to have a comparable impact. These paleo-tsunami studies and simulations contribute significantly to our understanding of the potential dangers posed by seismic activity in subduction zones. They help scientists and disaster preparedness officials to better predict the impacts of future tsunamis and to develop strategies to mitigate their effects on coastal communities. By examining past tsunami events and modeling potential future ones, researchers are able to gather crucial data that inform safety protocols and help ensure that populations in vulnerable areas are better protected from these devastating natural disasters. This ongoing research is vital for enhancing our readiness for and resilience to tsunami hazards particularly in regions prone to large-scale seismic activity like the Aleutian Islands. Alaska is also recognized as one of the most earthquake-prone regions on the planet. This area has witnessed numerous major earthquakes over the years. To understand these incidents better, it's essential to examine the natural processes behind them, their effects on local communities, and the strides made in earthquake preparedness and response efforts. The state is positioned at the interface between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. The Pacific Plate, moving northwest at a slow pace, slides under the North American Plate. This interaction at the subduction zone is the primary cause for the regular and often intense earthquakes witnessed in the area. The movements between these tectonic plates accumulate stress within the Earth's crust, which eventually releases through earthquakes. Discussing significant seismic events in Alaska, the earthquake on March 27, 1964, stands out prominently. Known as the Great Alaska Earthquake, it was recorded at a magnitude of 9.2, making it the second largest earthquake ever recorded worldwide. Its center was near Prince William Sound, and the quake persisted for approximately four and a half minutes, leading to extensive destruction across the region. This earthquake initiated several landslides, ground fissures, and underwater landslides, 
which in turn caused tsunamis. The most devastating tsunami waves impacted the coastal zones of Alaska, British Columbia, and even reached distant locations like Hawaii and Japan. Both the earthquake and the resulting tsunamis led to considerable loss of life and significant damage to property. Communities along the coast, including Valdez, Seward, and Anchorage, suffered harsh consequences. The effects of the earthquake were particularly severe in Anchorage, the largest city in Alaska. Numerous buildings fell, roads were severely damaged, and giant tracts of land were displaced. This destruction severely affected the initial rescue operations. The downtown district of Anchorage saw extensive damage to its structures, and residential areas suffered greatly too. Moreover, understanding Alaska's seismic activity involves not only studying these catastrophic events, but also recognizing the ongoing scientific efforts to monitor and mitigate such disasters. Researchers continually study the movements of these tectonic plates, aiming to improve earthquake prediction and enhance safety measures. These efforts contribute significantly to preparing the local populations through education on emergency response and improving building codes to withstand future earthquakes. This proactive approach is vital in reducing the potential impacts of earthquakes on Alaska's communities and infrastructure. As Alaska's biggest earthquake changes the land, towns face the hard job of rebuilding and getting ready for future quakes. Valdez, moving a devastated town to safety. Valdez, situated at the entrance of a deep inlet, experienced significant disruptions from both the earthquake and the subsequent tsunami. The powerful seismic event caused widespread damage, leaving many buildings in ruins and the port facilities heavily compromised. The town's original location was found to be unsafe, leading to the decision to move Valdez to a more secure area. The relocation process involved rebuilding the town several miles from its original site, significantly altering its historical trajectory. This effort required extensive planning and coordination, as new infrastructure had to be established in the new location. The new site for Valdez was chosen for its stability and safety features, contrasting sharply with the vulnerability of the old location. This move not only represented a physical shift, but also a strategic transformation in how the community approached disaster readiness and urban planning. The reconstruction of Valdez included enhanced infrastructure and building practices designed to endure such natural catastrophes in the future. Seward, another coastal town, faced severe challenges in the wake of the earthquake and tsunamis. The town's waterfront was particularly hard hit, with its docks, warehouses, and rail facilities largely destroyed. Compounding the earthquake's impact, fires erupted, further ravaging the town's infrastructure and adding layers of difficulty to the recovery efforts. The tsunamis triggered by the earthquake extended their impact well beyond the borders of Alaska. Coastal towns in British Columbia were hit by significant waves, and even as far south as California, harbors suffered damage. The tsunamis traveled across the Pacific, reaching Hawaii and causing damage to its coastal areas, and the effects were even noted in Japan, demonstrating the far-reaching impact of this seismic event. In the aftermath of the 1964 earthquake, immediate rescue and relief operations were launched. These efforts saw collaboration between the U.S. government, military forces, and local authorities to aid the communities struck by the disaster. This catastrophe led to a re-evaluation of building codes and construction methods, not just in Alaska, but also in other areas prone to earthquakes. Following the earthquake, there was a heightened focus on improving the understanding of and preparedness for seismic activities. Developments in earthquake monitoring and readiness have been substantial. The establishment of the Alaska Earthquake Center has notably enhanced capabilities to detect and respond to seismic occurrences promptly. Modern construction regulations now mandate that buildings be designed to resist seismic forces, significantly lowering the risk of severe damage during earthquakes. The 1964 earthquake, while the most notorious, is just one of several significant seismic events in Alaska's history. 
Another notable event occurred in 1958 in southeastern Alaska, where an earthquake prompted a colossal landslide, resulting in a mega wave in Latuya Bay. This wave soared to heights exceeding 1,700 feet, radically altering the landscape by stripping away vegetation and reshaping the terrain. This event, like others, underscores the dynamic and volatile nature of Alaska's geology and the ongoing need for vigilance and preparedness in the face of natural disasters. In 2002, Alaska experienced a significant earthquake with a magnitude of 7.9 on the Denali Fault. This earthquake resulted in visible breaks along the fault and was felt widely across the state, shaking buildings and rattling nerves. It caused considerable damage to infrastructure, such as roads and pipelines, disrupting daily life and commerce. The earthquake also triggered landslides and avalanches, serving as a stark reminder of the constant seismic threats that the region faces. The widespread impact highlighted the need for improved building codes and emergency preparedness in Alaska. The impact of this earthquake extended beyond immediate physical damage. It underscored the vulnerability of Alaska's critical infrastructure to seismic events and prompted a re-evaluation of how such essential services are protected. Damage to the transportation and energy distribution networks highlighted areas needing increased resilience to prevent disruptions in future seismic events. In the wake of this earthquake, the state's approach to seismic monitoring saw significant enhancements. Alaska employs a sophisticated network of seismometers and other technological instruments that record and analyze ground movements. The Alaska Earthquake Center works closely with federal agencies and academic institutions to provide up-to-the-minute information on seismic activity. This cooperation enables a deeper understanding of fault behaviors and aids in forecasting future earthquakes more accurately. Advancements in the fields of seismology and geology are continually deepening our comprehension of the seismic threats specific to Alaska. Ongoing studies, including those that delve into the 1964 Great Alaska Earthquake, shed light on the geological dynamics at play and help anticipate the outcomes of similar future events. This research is pivotal in refining safety protocols and enhancing building designs to better withstand seismic forces. Public education and awareness are also vital in the strategy to mitigate earthquake risks. Alaska has implemented wide-reaching educational programs that teach residents about the potential dangers and necessary precautions related to earthquakes. Schools, businesses, and community groups actively participate in regular drills and training sessions, aiming to boost preparedness and ensure swift, safe responses during actual earthquakes. Alaska's historical experiences with earthquakes highlight the critical need for ongoing vigilance and preparedness. The geological processes responsible for these earthquakes are active and pose a continuous threat. However, through the advancements in monitoring technology, comprehensive research, and public education efforts, Alaska is becoming increasingly equipped to handle these natural challenges. The lessons learned from previous seismic incidents, especially the 1964 catastrophe, play a crucial role in guiding current strategies to safeguard lives and infrastructure against future seismic events. Reacting to the frequent and sometimes devastating seismic activities, Alaska has developed thorough earthquake preparedness plans. These initiatives encompass the construction and reinforcement of buildings to improve earthquake resistance, the enhancement of emergency response strategies, and the broad dissemination of information on earthquake safety to the public. Through these measures, Alaska aims not only to manage the immediate impacts of earthquakes, but also to build long-term resilience against this ongoing natural threat, ensuring that communities remain safe and response mechanisms are effective and well-coordinated. From learning tough lessons in earthquake-prone Alaska, Efforts to make things safer and more ready for quakes take center stage. Earthquake safety in Alaska now. Alaska's modern building regulations mandate that all new constructions be built to withstand seismic activities. 
These guidelines have been continuously refined based on the observations and experiences from previous earthquakes, incorporating advanced engineering techniques. Efforts to retrofit older constructions to align with the latest standards are also in progress, ensuring that historical buildings receive necessary updates. By strengthening the structural resilience of buildings, the likelihood of damages and injuries during earthquakes is considerably lowered. These proactive measures help protect communities, making the state more prepared for future seismic events. Over the years, Alaska has seen the development of building norms that emphasize the safety and durability of constructions in earthquake-prone areas. The inclusion of seismic considerations in building designs is intended to ensure that structures can absorb and resist the forces generated during an earthquake. This not only helps in protecting property, but also significantly enhances the safety of the inhabitants. In addition to the design and construction of new buildings, Alaska places a strong emphasis on updating existing buildings to resist earthquakes. Retrofitting efforts are comprehensive and involve evaluating the structural elements of buildings to identify weaknesses. By addressing these weaknesses through structural enhancements, such as installing steel supports, securing foundations, and retrofitting walls, older buildings are better equipped to handle seismic forces. Emergency response strategies are vital in mitigating the effects of earthquakes. These strategies entail detailed planning and coordination among various government levels to facilitate a prompt and efficient reaction to seismic events. Regular training exercises and simulations are conducted to ensure that emergency teams are well prepared to handle emergencies. Furthermore, local communities are encouraged to formulate their own emergency plans, which include establishing effective communication systems and pinpointing safe evacuation paths. Public education initiatives are crucial in helping residents understand how to protect themselves during an earthquake. These educational campaigns typically provide guidelines on assembling emergency supplies, securely fastening large furniture and appliances, and setting up family communication strategies. Schools contribute significantly to these efforts by organizing frequent earthquake drills and teaching students essential safety procedures. Moreover, seismic retrofitting is a key aspect of enhancing building safety in Alaska. This process involves upgrading existing structures with additional supports, such as steel frames, to improve their earthquake resilience. Key focus is given to vital buildings, including hospitals, schools, and emergency service facilities, to ensure these structures remain operational during and after seismic events. The focus on strengthening the structural integrity of both new and old buildings, coupled with comprehensive emergency response planning and public education, forms the cornerstone of Alaska's strategy to minimize earthquake risks. By implementing these measures, the state aims to safeguard its residents and infrastructure from the devastating impacts of earthquakes, ensuring that communities are resilient and can recover swiftly from such natural disasters. Community preparedness programs in Alaska are specifically tailored to involve local residents actively in earthquake readiness efforts. These initiatives typically feature collaborations among local authorities, nonprofit organizations, and various community groups. By conducting workshops, training sessions, and distributing informational materials, these programs aim to educate people about earthquake risks and help them prepare adequately. These community-based initiatives play a crucial role in enhancing the overall resilience of communities to earthquakes. The workshops provide practical advice on safety measures and emergency procedures, while training sessions simulate earthquake scenarios to give participants a real sense of what to expect and how to react. This hands-on experience is invaluable in building confidence and ensuring that individuals know the steps to protect themselves and their families. Moreover, these programs often distribute essential guides and checklists that residents can use to prepare their homes for an earthquake. This might include securing heavy furniture to walls, identifying safe spots in each room, and preparing emergency supply kits. By involving various community stakeholders, these programs ensure that preparedness efforts are widespread and deeply ingrained within the community fabric. 
The capability to monitor and respond to earthquakes in Alaska has been greatly enhanced by technological advancements. Modern seismic monitoring equipment, such as high-sensitivity seismometers and ground motion sensors, provides critical real-time data. This technological leap allows for quicker identification of seismic events and a more precise evaluation of their potential impact, facilitating faster and more informed responses from emergency services and public authorities. Early warning systems represent another technological breakthrough in earthquake preparedness. These systems utilize the data from seismic instruments to detect the preliminary tremors of an earthquake. Upon detection, they promptly issue alerts to individuals and organizations in the affected zones. Although still under development, these systems can provide a crucial window, ranging from a few seconds to several minutes, allowing people to take protective measures before the more intense shaking begins. The ongoing refinement of these systems continues to improve their reliability and efficacy. Continued research in seismology and related scientific fields is deepening our understanding of the seismic threats facing Alaska. Researchers study the behaviors of fault lines, analyze ground movements, and assess the aftermath of earthquakes to gather valuable insights. This research is not only theoretical, but has practical applications, influencing how buildings are constructed and how communities prepare for earthquakes. Innovations in construction technology also play a significant role in earthquake resilience. New materials and building techniques that have emerged from ongoing research are being employed to make structures safer and more durable in the face of seismic activity. For example, flexible building designs that can absorb and dissipate earthquake energies are becoming more commonplace thanks to these advancements. Alaska's history of dealing with earthquakes underscores the necessity of being prepared and maintaining resilience. The state has leveraged a combination of cutting-edge technology, thorough planning, and extensive public education to better prepare for future seismic incidents. These comprehensive efforts aim to enhance building codes, develop robust emergency response strategies, and foster a culture of preparedness among the populace. Together, these measures are crucial in minimizing the impacts of earthquakes and ensuring the safety and security of Alaska's residents. Did the 1585 Aleutian Islands earthquake truly cause the devastating tsunami in Japan? Or is there another hidden factor we're missing? Could there be more to this story than the records reveal? Tell us what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing historical stories and discoveries.